cumbersome. So we're trying to work uh, with governments to see whether or not we can ease that process. So I, of course, um, also believe that if we're going back home, we should need a visa. Um, and that's an issue that we need to put on our agenda as we talk to governments. Uh, we also know that Abdullah Wad from Senegal invited Haitians uh, to move to Senegal, the land of their ancestors, after the devastating January 2010 earthquake. Uh, Wad said, Haitians are sons and daughters of Africa since Haiti was founded by the enslaved, including some thought to be from uh, Senegal. So he offered voluntary uh, repatriation to any uh, Haitian that wants to return to their origin. He said Senegal is ready to offer parcels of land, even an entire region. And we saw that uh, at the, 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 the end of this negotiation after the earthquake, 163 Haitian students moved to Senegal and they, will re they are receiving uh, not land, but free university education. Um, now, how Senegalese civil society dealt with that is another matter, because many of them said the old man is overreaching and he's not considering the economic hardships of Senegalese in general, and some of their own students in scholarships. So it's also an issue not just between diasporas and African governments, it's also an issue between governments and internal civil society. They've got some issues that, that they need to work through. Um, Tanzania uh, welcomed, over the course of history, has welcomed the second largest number of diasporas in the 60s and the 70s. And this is in part due to the coup that ousted in Kruma instead of African Americans who were living in Ghana uh, coming back to the uh, US, they looked for other places in Africa to go and settle. And, uh, and Tanzania opened its doors. It's also because of uh, Black Panthers, uh, Pete O'Neill and Charlotte O'Neill and uh, Geronimo Gijaga, who is my homeboy from Louisiana, who just passed. We know that Pete O'Neill and Charlotte O'Neill have been in Tanzania for 30 years. Um, they do not have citizenship, uh, but the presidents have allowed them to stay. They're doing incredible development work. Uh, Geronimo Gijaga died of a heart attack uh, two years ago, but as you know, he was unlawfully in prison for over 25 years. Once he received his settlement, he took that money to Ghana and to Tanzania to set up some development projects. He also married the daughter of Eldridge and Kathleen Cleaver. So she was also in Tanzania at the time. Uh, Pete, uh, who has been in Tanzania 30 years, has a case in court and he is trying to get citizenship. And my last visit with him, uh, then I said, so Pete, you're doing this incredible work. You left the US, you, you can't come back to the US. You're in um, exile here on a trumped up charge. You went to Algeria, you've been in Tanzania, and you, you can't, and you know, he will tell you himself, he can't come back and live in the US. So I said, you're, you're good. Look at this great work you're doing. And he says, uh, sister, before I die, I just want to belong somewhere. Because he's a stateless person. He has no citizenship um, as it is. Um, so in Benin, we look at Benin. Uh, former President Matthew Kedeku in February 1999 was here in Baltimore. And he apologized for Benin's participation in the slave trade. Uh, his quote, uh, he says, compatriots, we are sorry for our ancestors' complicity in the slave trade. He fell to his knees, um, as I read about this because I was not here, he fell to his knees to apologize for African role, for Africans' role in the slave trade at the Church of Great Commission in the Baltimore area. Are you all familiar with that church? Well, Jerry Rawlings also followed uh, Kariku and apologized um, as well. Uh, Cameroon, what we see um, this year will be the
the third year that the DNA diaspora group is going to travel to Cameroon. Um, and this year in particular for a land gift ceremony that is going to be held uh, in December. Um, and the purpose is to really make it practical to reconnect and for returnees to come back home. And when you have land, you have place, um, in fact, to do that. Um, Sierra Leone celebrated its 50th independence anniversary last April. Um, and based on what Cameroon did in 2010-2011, uh, they plan to bring some of their best known diasporans back, including Isaiah Washington. Um, Isaiah Washington has full citizenship in Sierra Leone. Um, and that was granted to him by the government. And then they're asking, well, this is, is this going to be a wider possibility for other people? They say, oh, we don't know. We're not sure. But Isaiah Washington has also put millions of dollars into the economy, uh, building schools, and also supporting clinics and hospitals. And uh, that is very much needed development aid. Um, other DNA Sierra Leoneans, uh, the Kings through uh, Coretta Scott King, uh, Andrew Young, uh, Jesse Jackson, a couple of friends of mine who were on the trip I organized to Cameroon in June. Uh, they did their DNA <coughs> test, but before we left for Cameroon, they wouldn't open the envelope because they said they wanted it to be Cameroon. <laughs> so when they came back, they opened it, and husband and wife are both men there from uh, Sierra Leone, so yeah, so this is really interesting. Um, I got nervous, I thought it was pretty.